Dragon Air Rape Freedom. Hey, hi, I know you guys, Koji here, traincomplete.com. So I thought that from 1st of January, we're gonna dedicate this whole month to the educate you on vegan diet, how to turn into uh, vegan or plant-based, and what's the flaws, what's the humps, what's the, what's the barriers to go vegan, and how we did it, how I do with my clients, and we're gonna do this in a podcast um, um, setup, so we're gonna, every day we're gonna have a little different topic um, around just plant-based diet in general, not necessary for performance, but how to switch, uh, the economy behind it, uh, environmental factors, everything else around like uh, if you're just more interested in um, turning vegan or plant-based, so we're gonna focus more broadly about veganism in general rather than the diet, then then this is the, the podcast what you're looking for. So we're gonna do this with my girlfriend here, it's Sarah, you can see in, uh, in the other seat and hopefully you're gonna switch between cameras and um, and it's gonna work out. So this is our first one. So hope you're gonna enjoy it and hope it's gonna work out. So we appreciate if you give us some feedback, comments, if you like the setup or no, or, or what you want us to change is, is pretty new, but as we have a lot of time here in the UK in the lockdown, there's a good time to to focus and educate you a little bit on a diet. I obviously have my uh, training videos and coaching videos on the channel, but diet and nutrition is all a little bit uh, uh, behind everything else. So this month, we try to release at least 20 videos, but maybe we can do one every day. It's not gonna be longer than one hour, so we're gonna fit in in 30 minutes to one hour every day in different topics, and hope you're gonna enjoy it. So we're gonna start today with um, how to turn vegan, what is uh, veganuary, and, and how we gonna, um, how you should do it, how you uh, attack it if you signed up to the challenge. So, um, veganuary is something like, it's come up with a, with a company, their mission to turn the word vegan or plant-based and it's been going on from I think it's from 2014 which uh, and every uh, every year more and more people sign up so it's a it's a one month vegan challenge or plant-based challenge where you can only eat uh, plant-based food so no meat no uh, animal product no uh, milk dairy and uh, cheese so only plants you can eat so if you sign up on a website you can see uh, recipes and and uh, for every day and they help you go through if you're interested in transitioning to vegan and obviously it's good uh, for people who just want to get back into shape a little bit uh, after the december and the christmas period so as more and more people interested in it um, this is becoming more bigger bigger every year so uh, that's what we're going to talk about today and we're going to see how Sarah started her vegan journey and 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 how she how she jumped into it. So if you want to share some thoughts with it. All right. So um, hi guys. Um, uh, I started in a very very cliche um, way. Basically, I started. Um, I've always I was always very interested in in either so social justice and animal rights um, in a general way, environmental sustainability and all those things. And um, I, I'm, I'm not sure when did it click specifically, I can't give you a date, but I, I know I was in my university years and, um, and I just started watching about, um, you know, the relationship between the way we eat in the environment and then obviously associated to that came the animal the whole animal um, rights implication and all of those things and I did used to think that veganism was a little bit radical because we were supposed to eat animals right I mean I was raised for 20 ish years to think like that so it's it's uh, it's a bit of a process to to change that um, perception and you know, whoever doesn't want to change it, that that's fine. But there, but 
I, I think at this point in time, no one can deny that it's perfectly possible to do it. And so if you're one of those people that is very, very uh, connected with morals and ethical stuff and has some difficulty in, you know, sort of, uh, how do you say, conjugate their image, their self-image as a nice, caring and, you know, just person with the fact that you eat a live beings, you know, it might be a bit hard to actually, you know, be able to conjugate those two aspects. So the idea that you have of yourself and then the, the things that you actually do in your practical daily life. And that's where I started. I started feeling a little bit bothered by that. So I, my first um, instinct was to try and rationalize. Why do I do it? Well, I do have reasons to do it, right? Everyone else does it, right? Um, and then I started to, you know, bit by bit, searching alternative ways like organic raised uh, cattle and all those things um, and you know once you give the first step usually it's very common to just search more and more and more and I started seeing things that horrified me to such an extent that I turned meat free from like overnight literally I got to a point I was like I can't see anymore and I don't need to, I just don't want to do this. I was horrified and it was, I did it the wrong way, definitely. I remember it was like 2012, 2013, something like that. And I just stopped eating meat at all, but I didn't know anything about nutrition. <laughs> um, so I did it, I definitely did not do it very well. I just took out the meat and start eating more of the other stuff. I was already eating a lot of vegetables every day, so it was not that bad. But I don't think I don't. I was not substituting meat very properly. Anyway, then like a week later, I start. I stopped eating fish because I thought, well, this doesn't really make any sense. If I don't eat the others, I don't want to eat the fish because if my basic reason is I don't want to eat live beings, regardless of whether I can um, sort of identify myself somehow with a fish or not is still an animal so I don't I don't want to do it um, but then you know further on I started researching I started to looking at healthy reasons to become a vegan environmental reasons to become a vegan because I was also thinking about that I don't want to just stop eating meat and then worsening my environmental impact for example in my I mean in my personal little bubble um, and then I you know, over time I kind of realized that all of this, I'm not saying like I'm the, like there's not a perfect well, way to live, yeah? yeah? But there are definitely advantages um, in all of those dimensions to being a vegan. And, and then, well, it just made me go on and on and on. I was vegetarian for a, for a period of time. Yeah. And then I just, I just turned vegan later on because I didn't think it made any sense to yeah. You know, being that far, you're not giving the final step. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. I th yeah. I think this co covers the why. So why you should go vegan, or even plant based in the first place. Which is someone just looking for improving their health. Yeah. Right. Uh, what do you think the why uh, could be behind it? Obviously, I'm a, I'm a sport nutritionist. So I, I could talk about this, but I want to see like a, your perspective around that. Probably, obviously, you know more about nutrition now, but before that, when you didn't know, did you think that plant-based diet is healthier, or you, or you, or you just thought it's something you turned because you were more like for the animal right reasons? But did you think it is is it healthier or not? Uh, in the beginning, I was um, so before doing the the turn, I had the idea that it was not, mm. but this was like years ago. This was like at ten. I don't know, 10 years ago, um, and oh, okay, look, like eight years ago or more or less, but um, because I wanted to do that, I was thinking about doing the transition, I started looking into it and I, <clears throat> and I realized some of my ideas were, were, were wrong, were not very accurate, mm. but I did have the wrong idea, I thought it was not, um, and then I started researching in the hope to finding a way to make it healthier and then of course I started to, to see other vegan people talking about it and I realized okay it's just like a general perception that is not very it's just not very correct it, it's not necessarily but I had the idea that it was not healthier than 
Interesting, because I think more people think that, that plant-based diet is healthier than, than other diets, so... Uh, and then when you they switch... Is, yeah. It's more widespread, yeah. yeah. And then when you switch, they might feel weaker and stuff. We're going to talk about later about that as well. But I think the general idea is that it's healthier in a way that you eat a lot of vegetables, obviously. But I think the main concern is always the protein and then, and then what you need from meat. Uh, and, uh, and for those people, usually, if they're just increasing their vegetables. So it's a, I think that's why just doing it for one month, it's a, it's a good way to just discover new recipes yeah. and then just see how to implement more vegetables and plants and, and pulses and beans and lentils into your diet uh, without the need of eating meat every day or more times a day. Yeah. Um, so for just that, if you just starting to implement more plants into your, into your diet, but keeping the meat at the beginning or just leaving, you know, like red meat out, yeah. the chicken and then the, leave the, uh, the fish and everything else out at the end. That's probably a good way to, to, uh, to approach it. So if we're here, what would you suggest people, how, how they should approach this, how they should approach just veganery at, at the beginning, so one month, um, if they, obviously if you sign up on the website, you're going to have yeah. one, yeah, 30 recipes or 30 days recipes, so you get all, everything laid out, but if not through the website, how would you do it, and then how would you uh, approach it? Um, I would, well, nowadays everything is very connected to the internet, isn't it? Mm. People just Google stuff, yeah. <laughs> so in case of doubt, just ask Google. Is gonna know something about it <laughs> but um, I would uh, well of course I'm not I can only talk about my own experience and I and I was the person that none of my friends thought I was actually gonna make it uh, all of them without an exception made fun of me um, because I was <laughs> very known you know by eating a lot um, bad things and basically eating anything that you would put on my plate food like food wise <laughs> I would eat it you know I was like sort of non-filter eater yeah. so they said if there is someone that is not gonna become a vegan is you and now they're like wow uh, and some of my friends actually have been asking me um, over the past years a lot of questions on how do you not get hungry how do you you know are able to only eat vegetables and still exercise and still be active and stuff and obviously I would I think my first um, sort of advice um, as a common person would be to try and not do a very very radical change in the beginning in comparison to their old um, diet to the, the diet that they already have because if you're going to do I, I believe that if you're going to do a very very radical change like I don't know, now you're going to eat, maybe you, you're going to see a model of eating or someone else that does like this very strict, I don't know, two meals a day, but you used to do like five meals a day. Now you're going to do the two meals a day. You're going to be hungry. You're going to be so hungry because now you're taking off stuff that are heavy to digest, such as meat and dairy. And also you're doing less meals. So that's probably not going to be a very good experience. So I would just say try to sort of, follow the same pattern of, of more or less of the diet you already have, but start, you know, exchanging some, some things and doing some little adaptations to, to eat vegan, but without changing your lifestyle that much in the beginning. Um, and I think the rest is going to come naturally because you're going to find new recipes, you're going to find, you know, new ways of eating. And after the first period, whilst your, your body takes probably to transition a little bit to adapt um, things are gonna get smoother and smoother and you're gonna want to you know go a step further a step further a step further and probably not everyone I reckon but, but many people end up you know entering this sort of um, health and fitness path as well yeah. after changing their diet so so yeah my, my first advice would be to don't try to do an exaggerate like a, a radical change because that might actually you know hinder 
your 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 progress because you might have a bad experience and then just go back because yeah. you don't want to to keep feeling bad yeah. Yeah. i don't know <laughs> you're you're your best you're the best to give this type of advice but i think yeah, yeah. obviously it's, every, it's, it's always going to be personal like it's diet is even more personal than training you can always get general advice but you have you really have to monitor yourself it's, it's even more because everything you're doing if you're a beginner in training usually whatever you do you're going to see improvement if you do, even if you do like very very bad stuff you, you're going to yeah. see changes because you're doing something yeah. radical like from not moving not doing anything moving just by you know even if your running technique is horrible you should start running walking just being more active your body's going to change you react for the stress for the stimulus which you cannot really tell on diet like okay as you as long as you're young you can pretty much get away with anything but as you're getting older and then and you develop more uh, intolerances and stuff like this then it's going to be harder to harder and harder mm -hmm. but uh in general i think anthony diet is it's it's even more individual than training so uh like most of the people get get away with the with the general let's say weight training and wise they're gonna see good results for like a year of time so for pretty long you can you can get away with with just general advice uh which is not true for 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 diet because uh it's so a general advice for let's say um eat 2000 calories uh, but for who you know if 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 it's like a 50 kilos female or a kid <laughs> who doesn't mean, move doesn't yeah. mean anything that 2000 calories might be a, a lot yeah. and just eating from 2000 calories from plants is going to be very very hard first yeah. of all because you know uh, veggies are very low in calories so it's going to be a struggle to eat that much also it's going to be put a lot of weight on because it's just extra calories it's they're never going to burn it so it doesn't matter even if the cleanest food if you overeat you're going to gain weight that's another idea that that people it's i mean obviously it's people like you not people like me who have to talk about these things but um it's something that i frequently say to the to my friends that ask me questions because they're like oh um you know how do you like um how are you training and just eating veggies do you have enough and i'm like as long as you eat enough calories like it doesn't it doesn't mean that because you're eating uh, skinnier <laughs> because you're not eating like if you eat a burger it's full of you know fat and calories if you eat a broccoli is not but then you can eat like five bro okay i don't eat five broccoli <laughs> at once i mix stuff but if you eat five different veggies you can eat a whole plate and maybe it's going to be the same caloric amount of, of a burger or something like that and that's what i tried to to tell them it's actually better for me yeah. it's actually better for me because I've always ate a lot. I've always ate um, a lot of times throughout the day, and, and reasonable amounts. So now with, with veggies, I can eat a very very full plate and still not go over my my caloric uh, yeah. goal for the day or whatever. Right? Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So the, the more generic advice I can give is like, uh, uh, is calories, right? Because even if if I would train a general. Uh, weightlifting advice i would say lift heavy weights let's say it's a squat then do five sets of five something is heavy for you yeah. but it's i cannot say eat 100 kilos like i cannot say eat 2000 calories for everyone yeah it's like i would say squat 100 kilos like you know if you never squatted in your life then 100 kilos is gonna be like a, a lot and then someone who is training for years 100 kilos is gonna be nothing so but if i say five sets of five then it's gonna be everyone is gonna be have a, a, a generally good um, stimulus from there because it's gonna be enough to build strength and muscle in the same time. But it's it's always relevant. Like what is heavy for you for five? The same here. Um, I, I cannot say eat two thousand calories, but what I can say is like eat around thirty calories after every kilogram you have. So if I if you have an eighty kilo average guy, then you can have. 30 calories after every kilo so is going to be like 2,400 calories. Okay. And if you just start training three times a week or two times heavy uh, lifting weights uh, and, and I don't know, two times cardio, then it's roughly it's going to be okay. Yeah. Uh, but, but for general, I would always suggest to my clients who are just starting off, just 
start filling out the my fitness pod anything less counting calories see what they've been eating so far so don't change your diet yet just exactly. start recording what you've been doing in the last you know months and years how much you've been eating and you will see how much you eat so you get like a general concept of your of your level of eating so if you were eating 3000 calories every day uh then don't switch to a 2000 calorie diet because it's like a thousand calorie minus every day it's gonna be you're gonna be starving it's hard yeah it's very very hard so what you need to do is just eat under a little bit so 250 under and you will see weight loss if you want to gain weight you turn into the opposite and plus you're exercising so you're spending plus you're more exercise. time yeah, yeah you exactly mm -hmm. so um so generally how to start i would just record what i've been eating for the last at least seven ten days take the average of that that's how i'm teaching in my courses um, for beginners or that's if I, someone sign up just record the seven ten days take an average and then that's going to be your daily calories yeah so because if you just sign up in a, in a fitness ball and this ask you questions always you're going to go for like weight loss and you want to be from 80 kilo to 70 and then it just drops like thousand calories but okay. it's going to be so radical what you need to do is get the 80 kilo start and if you want to be 70 put a target to 78 because that's your first target once you were 78 yeah. put the target to 76 so uh, you still gonna be the same results but not gonna be so radical from 3000 to 2000 calories or even from 2500 to under 2000 it's gonna be just gonna be hungry all the time so the machine is is, is always off the more the bigger the results you want the bigger the gap you're gonna give you for to eat yeah. less. So, it's so not what you? Give you a progressive no, it's not a progressive plan. It's just a, you want straight line. Like two more, I want to be seventy. <laughs> yeah. Always would be nice, but it takes weeks and months to get there. So if you've been you know overweight for ten years, then don't expect to get like in ten days. Yeah. So it's always it's gonna be um, uh, take time. So um, don't worry what the what the what the what the application recommends. Just do this calculation and take an average. See what you've been doing for the last seven days, 10 days. Yeah. Take an average of that. That's gonna be your daily calories. And then go under if you wanna lose weight, go over if you wanna gain weight. And, and that's a properly good advice. Yeah, uh, that's how we start. Yeah. And in terms of like switching uh, from meat to plants, always start slowly. If you're doing uh, the veganary challenge, then just follow what they say, it's probably okay. If you're lifting weights, you might need to eat a little more. Um, but what you need to do is just, if you don't follow the beginner, then it's just reduce everything. Don't switch from one night to another. Um, because just increasing your fiber that much, you're going to feel like um, blowing up your, your digestive system. It's like, yeah. Yeah, I think in the blow. beginning I felt a little bit, because I did that overnight crazy yeah. change. So I, And I was not doing it either like very well I was just putting more veggies on my plate but that doesn't necessarily because yeah you, man, you, you might be able to maintain the calories but then we go on to deeper onto nutrition and obviously that doesn't mean that you're necessarily having the balance between all of your yeah. nutrients and stuff but that's a matter for another conversation but um but yeah I felt I felt some changes on my body in yeah. the beginning because like after a month of, of eating completely different then I was have been eating for the past 20 years my brother was like what the hell are you doing <laughs> I was a bit confused um, but then it didn't took so long because I never got back actually it didn't took that much long our body I was young as well mm. and um, our body can adapt to a lot of changes like yeah pretty much everything um, so it was it was not that bad if, if you I how do you say this word persevered mm. <laughs> Um, so, so, so all end up well, and then I, eventually I started making it better. But let me just um, uh, reinforce what you were saying about the My Fitness Pal, which is a an app that helped me a lot. And that's also another advice that I gave one of my friends. She's not even training, mm -hmm. but she wanted to have a better um, and more plant based. Actually, I think she's completely vegan now. Um, a more plant-based diet and I said you can actually go and use the um, this this app uh, that I started using when I started um, doing personal training and it helped me a lot because I as a general public as a non-fitness 
uh, not within the fitness world. I never had even thought about counting calories. That was such an alien, now it's like basic knowledge, yeah. but that was like two years ago, it was such an alien um, you know, concept to me. Yeah. I just wanted to eat nice stuff in my plate and, and hopefully, and, and hope for the best. You know? Yeah, and, and obviously you can still do that. So it's not everyone like to count calories or want to count calories. Yeah. Uh, for that you have the, the portion size approach. You have a lot of different ones. It's like, and I don't do that every day anymore, but exactly. it did help me to have a notion of what I was eating. Exactly. So most of my clients, even if they don't do calories anymore, at the beginning for the first ones, I think it's really, really beneficial for everyone yeah. uh, just to see where you're at and, and how much you eat and have a better um, understanding of food quality and quantity yeah. at eating uh, 100 calories of chocolate and 100 grams of know, salad or broccoli was the different value that you get yeah. for 100 grams of something vegetable and nutrition, nutrition full than something as a chocolate, which is nice, but it's so color dense and you don't get anything out of it. Because the, the, the application shows you the, the minerals, the vitamins, everything what you need, protein, the micro and, and macronutrients, what you wouldn't pay attention. And then eating is not just calories, it's you get the vitamins, the minerals, the macros, you, you get a lot of things which, yeah. which you need for your body. And if you don't provide those nutrients, then not just your performance is going to suffer in the gym, but it's, it's another conversation, but just generally your health is going to suffer a lot. So uh, that's why this application is good. Even if you don't do it like 100% accurate, it doesn't matter in the beginning, yeah. but you have like a so much better notion of what you eat and what you've been doing wrong for long. And then, uh, then it's going to help because everyone is usually eat the same 10, 20 food. Yeah. You're not going to be, you know, so if you if you know those 10 20 recipes and ingredients then usually the rest of your life you're gonna be okay to how to choose those who is this for mainly or who, who would benefit the most for oh. trying this for one month yeah there's a lot of people who would benefit from this um, since people want to just feel healthier mm -hmm. um, people who want to learn about nutrition for example because I think that the vegan world is so complex and so nice to explore for people like that because um, there's so many variety, you know, I mean, in terms of meat eating, there's not that much variety. Well, I mean, there's a lot of animals in the world, but the ones we eat, at least in each region of the world, are, you know, just that little group of animals that we eat. Uh, so it's not that variety. But if you start looking at how many veggies you can put in your plate, how many beans, how many, oh man, there's, there's so much stuff that you can look at. For people who like to cook as well, mm. finding different, different recipes, different alternatives, um, being creative. So people who are looking for health, people who are looking for nutrition, people who like to cook and just would want a, a new challenge during this lockdown for the new year. Um, Obviously, people who are interested in fitness as well, because yeah. I, I really believe I've, I felt like my levels of energy changed uh, when I compare my, to myself when I was eating a lot of meat and after a vegan, yeah. um, being a vegan. So, um, and obviously, for people who are very interested in having a more sustainable life and who are very um, uh, interested in environment um, and, and, and you know in the environmental crisis and, and ecological uh, solutions that's also a very very nice thing to explore so a lot of people really I think m most of the world would benefit if not vegan to become plant based essentially plant based um, yeah definitely people who have weak immune systems people who have diseases people who have you know all of those diseases that I that are usually caused by a bad diet as well. So a lot, a lot of people would benefit from this. And obviously animals, right? It's just and animals. <laughs> 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 obviously, like, the animals what we don't eat in that month. Yeah. Uh, you can save a lot of lives. I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of animals have been saved every January. Oh yeah. I don't know if they've been eaten later on or what happened to them, but. 
uh, obviously if you if you just I think this year is like 40,000 400,000 people signed up for 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 veganery around the world so uh, I've seen that it since 2014 it yeah. has been more or less doubling every, every yeah. year yeah yeah exactly so almost half uh, I think half a million people signed up this year uh, let me just check for sure but but yeah yeah, one million since 2014. And those so, are not the vegans, those are the people outside the vegan world who just sign up for vegan already. Yeah, yeah. So this year, like, uh, sorry, 2020, January, there was 400,000 people. So it's doubling every year. So a lot of people signing up. So even if just for months, you can, a lot of animals can be saved. Yeah. And if those people see that they can live without meat or even just less meat. Even for, even at an emotional level, right? If, if yeah. you're very... Uh, you know, in line with ethical exactly. uh, motivation. And the only one who was like, even if they turn back or eat, eat, uh, they go back to eating meat. They usually they eat less, yeah. and they're more conscious about what they buy and how they buy it, and and and, and how they approach. But um, in the next upcoming episodes this month, we're going to talk about that as well. The impact of the environment, yeah. um, the animal, the ethical reasons. So we're going to go a little deeper on it, but. I want you to just, uh, just dedicate general. this, yeah, dedicate this episode to 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 the why and how, and and who is this beneficial for. So if someone wants to start this month or next month or any any time, so it doesn't have to be the first of January. You can start on the fifth of January. You can start whenever. Uh, try to get yeah, try to get it for for a month and then just you know learn your recipes, um, and and get out there. It's 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 getting easier and easier to. To be there are a lot of ways you can do it. You can just start, for example, uh, choose a couple of days on your week that you know you're going to eat essentially vegan the whole day or, or doing it throughout the week or something that do normal in the weekend or whatever. And you can just search recipes online. Usually they, are, they try to do recipes who are nutritionally balanced, so I guess that's going to be enough for now. Or you can sign up for Veganuary or you can go to, um, I think it's PETA, website or other websites such as those who have like vegan start packs mm. um, yeah. yeah and then you can if you're really really lazy and you just want to try like the difference between eating a steak or not you can just I guess change it for instead of steak you need a piece of tofu or something like or a vegan yeah. steak a vegan burger but, the, but but I think there are more interesting ways to do it um, mm. I, I don't do my, my, most of my vegan diet is not based on just substituting the meat for tofu. It's like, it's more actually veg, veggie, uh, normal veggies uh, in my plate than, than the meat substitutes. Um, and that's another idea that we can discuss maybe further on another episode is the, the costs of veganism because yeah, many people, yeah, many people think it's much more expensive and it's, I mean, it depends on how you do it. Okay, thank you. I think that's going to wrap up for the, for the first episode. Um, thank you for joining us. And I guess I'll see you tomorrow where you're going to talk about uh, resolutions. Resolutions. Oh, that's, a, that's an interesting yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> trying to plan this and what you, uh, what's the resolutions for, for this 2021. So I hope you'll see you here. It's obviously going to be up on the channel so you can watch it back anytime. And we're planning to do this uh, 20 uh, episode series. We hope you can enjoy it. Uh, obviously, you can check all the links in the description for if you need uh, personal training or online training this time. And uh, nutrition advice. I'm a sport nutritionist and vegan for a couple of years now, half a decade. So if you need any help, I can help you plan your diet for optimal performance. Train complete, guys. Train complete.